You're not going to be able to use the technique. Not the way I'm going to give it to you anyway. But basically, it's called reading auras. I talked about this a couple times. But it is important. I mean, I don't care what level, what you're dealing with, UFO people, abductees, government people, any level. Are they telling you the truth? Are they telling you what they believe is the truth? Now, orbs have multiple colors, and they can change, but it's not going to change from one bad one to one good one just because you ask them a question and they're trying to lie. The lies make it turn certain colors. Uh, the truth makes it see certain colors, depending on what the truth is. And all you have to understand is a few simple colors of what the aura needs to be or should be and what's going on when it's a different color. First off, if you look at a person and you stare at their face and you see a certain color aura, that's already telling you exactly what vibration they're in and what, the, what, what level they're at. Now, the color scale is quite simple. It's not like there's a hundred colors. I mean, they, they get lighter or darker and things depending on the level. But I will tell you, in auras, red and orange, both of them are anger and feelings and emotions. Green is a little bit more on the dark side. Gray is the dark side. Yellow, blue, and white are the positive side. So when you look at a person and you let your eyes just widen, like not being fine-tuned to any specific part of the person, and you can see their aura. Well, I'm just saying, if you already can, when you look at their aura, their aura will probably be about a half an inch around their body. Meaning it's normal. Normal width size. The color, if it's black or gray, there's nothing you should be saying to that person or asking them. Because you're not going to get anything good or important out of it. If you see an aura like gray, and it kind of looks like it has holes in it, that's because of the drugs and the drinking they do. Now, when it goes into orange or red, then you have to be careful because they're in an angry state. Their energy is really violent right now, and it could explode. If it's blue or white or yellow, that's the most positive spaces of, of the consciousness. It's hard to say which one's the most versus not. I would kind of go with blue being the highest and, and white being under it, and then yellow less than the white. Uh, so you kind of would look at that shading of yellow and white for how spiritual they are. Now, when they're that color, much color of those, I mean, when they're those three colors of any one of them, I put a picture of me up that somebody took with a calling camera. But if you see any of those colors, then you're going to see the distance around their body grow. It will no longer be a half inch. It'll be, it could be a, and I'm, it, it'll be an average of like maybe six inches. You'll see a nice area glow around them. I mean, I saw about three people in my life where their aura was like many feet around their body. So, and there's not that many people on this planet that can do that or radiate that. So uh, I'm not saying look for that because you probably will never see it in this lifetime. Because right now I'm looking for spiritual people and I don't see any, uh, which is scary, sad, and, and everything else. But good people doesn't mean they're spiritual. You could be good on planet Earth. doesn't help you in the astral plane. So there's rules you need to learn here and there's rules you need to learn there. It's when Jesus said, give to this planet what it deserves and give to God what it deserves. Two separate things. But does anybody really know what's supposed to be given back to God? I'll tell you, probably 99% of the planet do not know. It doesn't want you to sit there on your knees and pray to it. It doesn't need you to do that. God itself isn't egotistical. Jehovah was, that's a different, that's a deity, lower form God, but uh, God itself doesn't. 
And I challenge people because I stand by what I know and I, I defend it. I walked against the hardcore magicians on this planet as well. I don't want to brag about those things, but I did it because I knew I could. I mean, I can go into some incredible stories, but I don't want to do that now. I want to try to keep with this idea of the ability to see an aura. It's not a hard, complicated technique. Uh, there's a couple things you can do to prepare for it. They're not complicated. Uh, you can do them in your own home, by yourself, or with another person. It's fun doing it with another person. Interesting, uh, because now you get to see their their different aspects as well. Not their, just their auras, their actual experiences. When people talk, they don't understand how much is really there. I'm dealing with having problems with a certain kind of people, claiming to be super hypnotists and all those kind of words. Uh, I learned myself everything I know about hypnosis, and I did it. So I don't get programmed by the ideas and, and levels of thinking how people say, well, this and that and that and that. Uh, thinking you can make somebody tell everything. Well, you can make people do certain things. But making them become spiritual is not a possibility. Because you hypnotize them. And I tried to say this to somebody recently, and uh, they got upset. But when you hypnotize a person, all right, you hypnotize their energy. You hypnotize everything around them. So whether they have guides, demons, entities around them, they will get hypnotized. The same as, and, and you won't hear a hypnotist talk about this ever. When you hypnotize that person, you're hypnotizing the angels, the beings, and everything around yourself as well. So when somebody comes out to talk, it could be any one of those. It doesn't have to be the person that's saying that you're trying to hypnotize. Because if they're hypnotized, their body's an open book, so any, any, anything could step inside it. Uh, I can't be hypnotized, so I'm protected that way too, even. But uh, in general, you hypnotize a person, you hypnotize everything around them, and you say, well, what was your last life? Well, some, some being will jump and say, well, I was a king, I was this, I was that, I was, whatever. The idea is when you get all your information of all your lives, piece them together. Put the time frames in some kind of order. See how long you were in that body or could have been in that body. How long you were out of the body before you went back into your body. All those things will help you determine how real it is. So obviously, and I, I mean, they, they said certain spiritual people were ran two bodies at the same time and things like that. We're not going to go into scenarios right now. We're going into the facts that you need to learn, a person needs to learn when they do or readings. It's not dangerous. You're only looking at the truth, whether it's a lie or a truth that they're saying, you're looking at it. Uh, you didn't give them, you didn't drug them to get their answer. I mean, the sex drugs and all those things are really perverted, twisted. So uh, I'm not saying any kind of drugs because that's only for prisoners. And if we want to know if somebody really murdered somebody and things like that. But uh, an aura, everybody radiates this aura around them. It's the color of their soul's vibration. So they can't just change it. Well, I better li- I'm going to lie to this person. It doesn't change because that, that's who they are already. For a person so ready to be able to lie, it's a part of their energy level. And it will show in their aura. Like I said, you look at somebody and you see this dark red and you see blackness around that as well. you got trouble coming. You see a great, like I would say right from the start, there's no sense even wasting your time. Whatever they say is not going to be true. You go to an abductee, and I listened to Bud Hopkins because he worked with a friend of mine. And she was the first person to work with him. And he became like the top, top, top hypnotist working with abductees. He never had experience with aliens, never saw a ship. And all his stories are based on what he got from other people's stories. So he really never proved anything he said or talked about. 
except I knew this girl and I worked with her and I know she she was being abducted for a year. Uh, but she was being abducted by the Greys and thought they were okay people. So, again, there's a programming going on while they do it. If a person accepts the program, I was trying to get her to see beyond the program, but she didn't want to. So, we each have this aura around us. Wherever we walk, it shines around us. You can't shut it off. You can't put a sheet over it. I'm going to put a coat on and you won't see my aura. No, it's not like that. The aura is there always of who they are as soul. So do you have to ask them if they're lying? If their soul, soul is, their aura is black, great. You don't got to ask them anything. You know it's a lie. Period. Now, so again, back to the part I was saying, when somebody has a dream, they were on a ship and they were dealing with these aliens and it was all good. They come back. They can tell themselves that it was real. But their aura is not going to light up blue because of that. It's still going to say gray because it's a lie. Just because their mind's saying it doesn't make it true. So their aura is still going to say the stay, stay the same color. So I, t- I kind of give you a simple description of the colors. Sure, you can add all the other colors in between those colors, depending on the level of the, that they are in that state. But I'm telling you, if it's blue, white, yellow, feel free to listen to them and, and take what they say as, 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 as the truth. But you're not going to see that. Sorry to tell you that. I was empathic. I mean, I could read auras if I stare at a person and work at it. But I just, everywhere I walked, I could see their aura and hear what they were thinking. Oh, well, that's, no, it wasn't make-believe. Every single day, which was about a year and a half, I always asked one person every day what I knew they were thinking. And the first thing they would say, how do you know I was thinking that? That's the first thing they say. So I knew it was real. You can't make that up. Not more than three times in a row, that's for sure. So... But seeing their aura, it was just there in front of me. This person's lying, this person's full of it, this person's that. And you can say the words about it to yourself. But it also gives you the idea that don't ask this guy that aura is gray how important God is in, in, in your life. This you're not going to give you any kind of a good answer. Or ask him why alien, aliens are here. Why the reptilians supposedly did this. Did when they tell you the reptilians did this and their aura is still great, they don't know the truth. Pure energy vibrates at a much higher rate than vibration. Now, the other thing that goes with that is a name. Everybody has a spiritual name. Learning what that is is helpful because when you travel all the inner worlds, every soul has a vibration, which is their name, which is their sound. It could be a one or two syllable word. Uh, hey, Tom, it's a Good. In, in order to determine that, do you, uh, can you still be in the physical world or do you have to be uh, you know, somewhere else to figure that out? What, the person's aura? No, the, uh, the, the name. Oh, no, the, the name, uh, it's in, in between both. And Let's see what time is it, 2.15. All right, I'll get back to what we were talking about. Let me just answer that real quick. Medicine woman I studied with uh, said the easiest way to find it is on a nice day or a rainy day, whatever you prefer, find a a, a quiet park to go sit in or or an oceanfront, lake, river, stream. I think water helps a real lot because water carries the energy of this planet at every level. Sit near it. And and the second next thing, if you can put your back next to a tree, do it. Uh, while you're looking into the park, water, lake, river, whatever. And then what you would do, you could play music if you want. Not sure if it helps or not, uh, everybody. But start spitting out little phrases like, aha, cuckoo, mama, just things, just let things come out naturally, not thinking too hard about what they are. All right. Uh, and words like 
try to think of like human, ahi, uh, uh, I mean, even a fish name, which is like an ahi. Uh, 